I have a bad feeling about this. I've got a bad feeling about this. I got a bad feeling about this. I got a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling about this. I've got a bad feeling about this. Okay. Quiet. What? Welcome back. It is the bad feeling mailbag. All of your queries, your curiosities, your concerns have funneled in through the hollow net and now. We are parsing through them as we have a bunch of submissions. Again, if you want to submit a question, best way to do so is through our Discord. And even better than that is to become a Patreon supporter as our first question for Charmer Doe and myself comes from Hyperfoil Wampa Saved asks, after a meta has been established, how do you guys try to find the small edges that will make you earn the wins over other high skill players? I've always struggled with figuring out how to next level myself from there. I understand the meta and how the decks work, but how do I level up and beat the players at the same level as me? I think that's a valid concern because I think we've all been there where to a certain point, we just kind of hit this this proverbial wall where we're thinking like, man, what else can I do? Uh, I, this, this person either has my number, this deck has my number. Um, the answer I will give is sometimes it comes down to figuring out what you're losing to most, be it a particular card, a player or a play style. And you might have to either, just concede that you can't get over the hump, which I don't recommend because you always can. But the other option there is put in reps against that particular deck or style. And the other one is think about the cards that you're playing in your deck. Like think about evaluate what underperforms, what overperforms, identify it, weed out the bad and bolster the good. And that's kind of where I'm at when it comes to small percentage points. And by small percentage points, sometimes it's just a matter of saying, you know what? Vanquish is a cool card, but I it's too expensive. I never get to see it, and I'm just as well suited with an open fire instead. Uh, it's cheaper. It gets the job done of what I need, and sometimes that's the best. The best option is that and reps, reps, reps. Yeah, just get into the minutia. Um, one thing I always like to do is is uh, talk with my opponent about uh, the game we just played. Uh, if I if I lose at a local or something like that, I always you know want to talk the games through with them. And most people will, you know, uh, especially if you lose, because then they'll be like in a good mood because they beat you, right? But uh, you know, a lot of players prefer to go back through and see, you know, how are what are ways things could have been different. So yeah, do that. Um, obviously, practice makes perfect. That's that's very very true. Um, but with the bad matchups, it's really kind of a matter of like. You're never going to get to the point where, you know, with some matchups, you are just not favored. That's just how card games are. And that's okay. Um, that's that's good, in fact. Um, but, you know, then it becomes kind of a fun sort of side quest to be like, well, how can I, uh, you know, raise my win percentage against this deck from like 30% to 40% or even to 35%, you know? And if you can do that, you know, that's going to win you a local. That's going to win you a couple of games here and there. And, and that's going to feel good. So... Yeah, I think just approaching it with a attitude of of really diving into the minutia turn by turn and what are the effects three turns down the or three actions I should say down the road that this one action is uh having um you know then uh, eventually you'll figure things out but a lot of it is just reps. First of all, let me just say saved that you're already a long way to being the best and i say this because you uh at least on our discord have numbers in your name and we all know numbers and names win games okay oh. it's just a fact <clears throat> charm 3r xbox uh, live it's... attitude yeah. right there yeah, yeah. Early <laughs> Jokes aside, there's two there's two sides to this answer that i want to give the first is more like deck building oriented and the second is like player like as a person oriented so on the deck building side um, I agree with what Doa and Flake are saying. Just play reps. Uh, but there are two things that I would like to add on. One, if there is one deck that you're just like, I can't beat that, uh, do not be afraid to take the mentality of if you can't beat them, join them. Sometimes there is just a best deck in the format and trying to be like the cool guy in the room who who figures it out isn't worth your time, right? We've all played, you know, other card games where there is a clear best deck in the meta and 
if you really want to win, like that's the way to go. You just play Starvo. Um, <laughs> also, yeah, it always comes back to Starvo. Doesn't it always it? comes back yeah. to Starvo. Uh, <laughs> but also the other side of that is you also might want to consider. I'm not going to say like conceding to not get over the hump or whatever, like Flake uh, was saying, um, because I'm, I'm with Flake. Like, don't say that. Don't say like, hey, I can't get over the hump. But sometimes the right move, if you have a bad matchup, is to actually just pretend it doesn't exist, right? You play what I call matchup roulette, where you're just saying, I just hope I don't run into it because it doesn't matter what I do. My matchups aren't great. So instead, I'll just pretend it doesn't exist. And as a result, what can I do to make my matchups for every other game better? Right. So uh, as an example, right on Sabine, there are things I can do to short my item matchup, but it's going to make my deck that much worse against every other deck. Or I might say, you know what, I can beat everything not named Aiden and we're just going to hope I don't get paired into Aiden because it's too much healing or whatever. I'm, I'm just, you know, kind of speaking rhetorically here or whatever. But sometimes that's the call. Right. You might say, look, it hurts my other matchups way too much for me to try to plan for my one bad matchup. So sometimes just figuring out what you do best and sticking with your strengths is the way to go. Um, now that's the deck building side on the player side, right? If you're saying specifically, like doesn't matter what the deck is. I just want to know how I can continue to get better against players of equal skill. Um, my answer to that is, play as much as you can with players that are not of equal skill. Always try to be the dumbest guy in your testing group. Find uh, people that yeah. you think are better than you. Find <laughs> people that you think are smarter than you. And then just learn from them, right? Like that's the reason that they're there. And if there are players that you think um, are better or even just players that you admire, or maybe they have a different way of thinking, whatever the case may be, find the people that you think you can learn from and then learn from them. Um, that's, that's how you, you get that leg up in my opinion. Wonderful. Uh, who wants the next one? I'll take it. Fire away. Uh, sure. From typo 180, uh, mail big question might come up anyway. Hey, it did come up and it's yours. Uh, what do you think about the points based two game format that Lorcana is trying out? Would you want to play star Wars unlimited this way? Um, it's interesting. Cause I've been thinking about this a little bit more lately because a fact with Star Wars Unlimited and Best of Threes is that many, many, many games go to time now. Um, just because of the way the game is, uh, some of the slower matchups, like if it's a, you know, Iden versus Palpatine game, you're never, you're never finishing all, you know, two or three games in that set. You'll be lucky if you finish two. That's even unlikely, I would say, unless the players are both really, really fast. So um, I can see why people are starting to talk about it because it has become apparent that in a lot of matchups, it's difficult to finish a best of three in the the standard time that's been set for tournaments in Star Wars Unlimited right now. Um, I I go back and forth on it. Uh, when I casted League of Legends in Korea back in like the mid 2010s, we had a, that format where uh, because best of threes for League of Legends from a broadcast standpoint would create wildly different finish times for the broadcast uh, by the tune of hours. So they instituted a system that was a two game series where if you 2 0 you got three points. If you went one and one, you got one point each, um, which which I thought was pretty fair because if you each won a game, you get something. And then if someone 2 0s well, you know, they should be rewarded a little bit more for that, it felt like. And uh, people, the the teams, the players, the, the organizations, everyone seemed pretty cool with that as the format. Um, I don't know what Larkana's format is specifically, um, but I would advocate for something like what I just described, where you get a little bit of a bonus for 2 owing. Um, that helps with tiebreakers, you know, down the road, I suppose. Um, but you know, if you win a game, you you get a point. You don't end up, you know, both losing for for drawing at one one. So yeah, I, I think for Star Wars Unlimited, that's that's a conversation that people can have. Um, but uh, but I don't know. I, I'm not willing to commit to a yes or no with that. I need to think about it more. I, I want to commend Lorcana for like trying something new. And I know that um, M Magic has been through the grinder of how to sort of fix a lot of the non games that sometimes occur from land related things. And the way that they attack that is by changing the mulligan rules. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, we have the Vancouver mulligan now or the this mulligan or whatever purely. And it's all done to address the same thing which is basically 
having games that you can play because of land screw and this and that uh, with, with this it seems to me like they're just having an issue where it's like either the games aren't being played fast enough and and resolved fast enough and i don't know much about the um the meta for Lorcana to understand enough about how the games are actually resolving. But from people I speak to a lot of the times and a lot of the criticism is that if you go first in Lorcana, you have a significant advantage. And if you're playing three games, one of those players is going to go first three to uh, twice. And that basically might decide who wins. And ultimately uh, okay. that might come down to the dice roll at the beginning of the game to decide. And that's what they're trying to get around. Um, mm. My only gripe when it comes to, Star Wars Unlimited is that I have played enough games that have gone to time and I've witnessed enough games that have gone to time. Now that has been a lot better recently as more players get more reps and are more comfortable in how their deck operates and how their opponent operates. So there's a lot less sort of humming and hawing about how they're going to approach turns. However, I still see that I'll be completely honest here. Control control mirrors are best of ones. Like, that's what it is, because game one will yeah. go 30 to 35 minutes. Game two will have no resolution, and therefore the winner of game one wins. So I'm all for trying new things. I don't think that we're there yet. I applaud Lorcana for trying something new. But I think that the problems are inherently somewhere else. That's my answer. Yeah. I mean, that was going to be my answer, is that the, the two-game format would not address the problems that Star Wars Unlimited is currently having, right? Mm -hmm. Um whoever's going first or second and because of the the nature of passing turns back and forth in terms of like initiative and actions and whatever it's just not really as much of a concern with this game so you don't need to go to a, a best of two to address that no also as flake was saying right right now a lot of control games are already a best of one so whether it's you know three games or two games if you're only getting one game done in the time frame anyway shortening that doesn't do anything um I I'm not a fan of the the two game because I feel like you're already opening yourself up for too many draws at that point anyway. And right now in Star Wars Unlimited, they're they're treated uh, like as both players lose. So you'd have to rethink everything to address that. And if you're rethinking that, then in my opinion, I would rather just see a system where it's still best of three. And if you don't finish the the full you know suite of games and you're one and one whatever you were going to apply to the the two game series you just apply that to your best of three logic and you find some middle ground right so you should have best of three you got a winner decided if you go one and one maybe it's a draw with you know points for games one as tiebreakers or something and then you know if you only finish one game it's you know whoever won the one game still wins etc cetera, etc cetera. um it just yeah the lore kind of thing doesn't address the problems that swu is having uh, that is from Hyperspace Foil Wampa Typo. I want to add one little thing real quick mm -hmm. uh, before we move on to that. Uh, move on to the next question is that um, I would say to to fantasy I would say to fantasy flight out there, uh, if you want to try something like that, try it now uh, because you've given yourself this runway before uh, the big competitive stuff happens. Uh, you know, because you're not really doing any any big things here in in set one. Uh, so yeah, if you're gonna do it, do it in the next. Uh, couple months i think to try it out now is the time to experiment format wise and be like hey for the locals this month we want everyone to run it this way uh and and try it out uh, that's what i would that's what i would encourage them to do if they're thinking about it at all don't don't hesitate too much now now's the time next up that's you charmer yes this is from another hyperfoil wampa trashy fantastic name their question is what are your thoughts on there being non-foil variations of cards? As part crow, I can't help but collect the shiny things. I'm also part crow, by the way. Love my Corvids. Uh, but they go on to say, I have multiple decks now where everything is foil except my Mahdi, I'm your father, R2D2, etc. Will we see foil variations in the future for collectors? Um, my initial response to this is, yeah, I expect we'll see foil versions at some point. I just don't think they've rolled them out because the, you always want to have something in your back pocket. Um, we haven't seen, like, we have the, we have our OP kits, right? And we know that we have the, the Mace Windu for the store championships or whatever, but we haven't seen everything there is to see. And so there's a big part of me that wonders if, you know, we might see other events in the future where you get the hyperspace foil R2-D2s or whatever, for example. Um, there's also a scenario where maybe they do those as like 
event things. Um, there are already scenarios where there's even beyond that non foils. Like, yes, we have the um, pre release foils technically, and we have the, the judge versions, but the hyperspace foils for Luke and Vader don't exist because the, there was regular hyperspace for Gen Con. Um, I, I think that we'll see them eventually, and they're just kind of holding on to them to do something special with them. I, I think that you're right. I think that there, if we do get them, there'll be like, we, we still have a galactic championship happening in 2024. So it might just be like part of the bundle. Like, you know, or, you get a, you get a play yeah, mat, exactly you get some promos. Say, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, or just real quick, because I'm now having flashbacks to something that Josh uh, has said at uh, several occasions. Um, there will be prize walls at these big events. Ah, and so oh, there yeah. might be things yeah. that they're reserving for that yeah. the same way that other True. games reserve your, you know, cold foil frostbite tokens and rune chance and whatever. They could be prize wall things for their bigger events. Well, when I used to play uh, the Legend of the Five Rings LCG, also a fantasy flight card game and some Keyforge and things like that, too, uh, at the big tournaments, yeah, they had prize walls with alternate art cards you can only get there. So that would be right in line with with what they've done with other card games in the past. So, yeah, I I think you nailed it. I'm I'm guessing that's where we're going to see it. All right. We got one coming in from Hopeful Dino. Keep up the great work. Love the new Star Wars stories and the stuff I grew up with uh, With has a, a special place in my heart. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, some of the Legends characters have made their way into the new canon, like Thrawn, Dathomir Witches, and even Dash Rendar. What characters, ships, or races do you hope to get brought into the canon and deserve card treatment in SWU? Or do you hope FFG Star Wars Unlimited were to print a Legends set uh, of characters? We have seen support for Legends by book reprints and comic reprints. Thanks for what you do. I will say this. I know exactly what Doa uh, is going to say in terms of what races he wants to see. It is the Bunta Eve race. That's the one he wants to see. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The Bunta right. Eve classic is, is yeah, definitely the race that he wants one, to see. Yeah. Uh, look, there's definitely a plethora of characters that I want to see. Thrawn would have been on top of my list. If I didn't see a single character from Star Wars Unlimited, um, Thrawn would be the number one car- character I would have loved to see purely from intrigue beyond that however it's gonna be anything from shadows of the empire most likely uh i want to see shizor the black sun syndicate and all that stuff i think there's a lot to dig into there uh, of underworld of fringe of of outer rim and i'm all for it i knew you were gonna say shizor um for me something that I don't believe has been like reintroduced in canon, but was from the legend stuff. And I apologize. There's a chance I'm slaughtering this pronunciation, but I've only ever read it. So this is the way I've always said it in my in my head. But the Isalamiri, the uh, creatures that Thrawn would keep around to like dampen. Oh, the yeah. Force effect, oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. It would be a really cool thing for them to kind of re-explore that territory because I liked the idea of you know, Thrawn being that calculating mastermind so much so that he kept pets to, you know, shield himself from his quote unquote uh-huh. allies. Right. Uh, so that's something I would like to see reintroduced. I always thought that that was a cool thing that Thrawn did. And like I said, I don't think that they have re-entered canon. Hmm. Oh, yeah. The uh, Yasalamari, because they're kind of like salamanders. A sal- salamiri. Yeah. I think that's how you say it. I'm trying to figure it out now. Yeah. Like I said, I've only ever yeah. read it. Um, so I've always like in my head said Issa Lemiri when I, when I read it, but Mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I, I didn't know Dash Rendar was, uh, brought back in new Canon. Is that, is that I haven't seen in what, um, Google this right now. Yeah. That, that, that might warrant, um, a Google, but, um, like uh, they're not afraid to dig into what's popular. In fact, Timothy Zahn just wrote a whole new three or four books for Thrawn. Like they, if it's popular enough, they'll go and find it. That's why I am so convinced oh, that Mara really? Jade is in the near future for Star Wars. Oh, so was, so Dash Rendar is uh, indeed yeah. in the new canon because he was mentioned in a, a book, apparently. I guess which book? Yes, he was One mentioned. Of the- Han Solo books. That's right. Yeah. I'm, I, I, is it I like last Google shot or something like that? I don't know. It's one of the new ones. Okay. But apparently I, uh, he's mentioned. So he's, he does exist. He doesn't. <laughs> they do exist. Yeah. Mara J- it's just not been properly explored. Right. Cause I think we would all remember that dash has always had a special place in my heart because again, we've all, or I hope anyway, we've all played that amazing video game. <laughs> well, so. Some of us of a certain age yeah, have played yeah. it. 
of uh, many others uh, who are are not uh, of a certain age, uh, probably have not. Yeah, yeah. And sixty four was a long time ago, man. Yeah, what a great <laughs> system that was, dude. Oh my god, I remember when no, I got it that. Was, it was the games were fun, but man, it was like plan it, it was the the messiest looking graphical <laughs> oh, well. like uh hi i I've ever, it was it was crazy like how bad could anti-aliasing get um well well check out the nintendo 64 hey man the i games was are good the games they really were really great fun. like the problem is is that my memories versus what's at like reality are not congruent here because my rea- my memories yeah. of of four stacking golden eye in my friend's basement with like pizza mm-hmm. and mountain dew well we didn't have mountain dew but like pizza and orange crush like they 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 hit <laughs> different than when we sat down a few years ago and busted it up and dusted it off and i'm like this is the choppiest worst yeah. nonsense <laughs> Ever. But it's all we had. It's all we had. But you man, know? at the time, yep. that game was like in, in Nintendo Power. Goldeneye held like the top game for mm-hmm. like ninety something consecutive weeks, and possibly even more. Like it was unreal oh. how how that game was the top game forever. By the way, Nintendo Power was a, a physical magazine that used to get delivered to your mailbox. Oh, um, I had a subscription. Or, uh, yeah. Back when you visited your mailbox, uh, that was a physical mailbox. Uh, yeah, or you bought it in the store or something like that. Mm-hmm. It had posters, comics, charmers linking images of of uh, sh- uh, Shadows of the Empire. Is that what I'm? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah Great that- game. I played the swoop bike level like over and over and over again until Pod Racer came out. They hooked you because the first level of that game was Hoth. And you're in yeah. a you're in a snow speeder and you're tying up uh, AT-ATs looking for those challenge points. God, that what a great game. Um, we've got Did time the for points. Rogue Squadron. No, because they both got. Oh, maybe levels. they both. But like the you got challenge points in Shadows of the Empire, and oh, you okay. got one for tying up an ATAT with your harpoon. That was one. Um, we got time for for one more, and I do want to say one thing to Grand Moff Guile, who's asking a, a question regarding reprints. I think that this is a conversation that we want to have a deeper conversation in a future episode, so we will eventually get to that. So uh, hang tight on that one, I think. But we do have another one, uh, the last one of the day. Who's reading that? I think you just volunteered. Oh, am I? Uh, okay, uh, let's see. So, uh, sorry, which one did you say we're reading? I was looking up the, the Empire stuff. Ba- Bacanonist. Oh, okay. Uh, the the book. I didn't want to pronounce the name. That's why I didn't read the question. <laughs> Listen, I, I've already gonna get us to the entire foreign now. people, so I might as well just slaughter a name or two. <laughs> Sounds too much like Bonobo yeah. to me, and you know, m- me and those monkeys. So, I I don't, and <laughs> I don't, I don't, <laughs> you want, don't want, want to. to. Uh, Let me just uh, tell you right now, you don't want to. Uh, okay, okay, so for the mailbag, anyway, the Bocanist asks. Uh, with Spark of Rebellion out of print until later this year, it's getting increasingly hard to introduce the game to new players. Even players that I know were interested in playing are div- divesting Swoo. Divesting Swoo. Since the cards are so expensive now, um, and also they can't find people to play with, uh, complete collections, don't want to leave thousands of dollars on the table. Uh, I myself have, am having difficulty completing my collection as more players seem to be opting to sell over trade. So my question is this, what would it take to bring players into an unestablished new game such as Swoo and the product is so limited slash expensive? Bonus question, anyone else see Boba Fett Incinerator and think Trogdor the Burninator? Um, I am now, I'm always going to think that now, uh, Burninating the, the peasants. But, but no, Boba Fett is kind. He loves his family and all that. Uh, but as far as your question goes, yeah, unless he's riding over their houses with a <laughs> rancor. But uh, uh, as far as your question goes, uh, it, it is tough, right? And and on the, it's it's a double edged sword, right? Because on the one hand, you know, product was bought out faster than they anticipated. It sounds like they legitimately printed a lot. Um, and everyone I know that wanted to get into the game and knew it was coming out got what they wanted generally it's people that are like now two months later being like oh i want to try this are having trouble getting in so to the one extent that's a good sign it's good they printed it all uh they've said as well that that you know taught them a lesson that they will hopefully be able to rectify with the next set and that they'll print more of it they announced a reprint for uh for spark of rebellion coming later this year so i uh, any problems that occur now I don't think are that much of a huge concern to me uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, when I when I played in Minnesota, 
pretty much all the locals were packed. Now that I'm down here in LA, pretty much all the locals I know of are packed. So uh, people that have cards are playing. Um, the uh, the people that want to play but can't get cards now uh, aren't going to write this game off forever if they can't play right now. You know, they might not play for a year or something like that. But if they really do want to play this game, they really do want to try it, they'll have opportunities to start later. You know, we see that there will be starter leaders in every set. You know, that's going to be a good jumping on point, of course. Um, and then uh, beyond that, uh, there's a lot of us that have bought uh, uh, quite a few boxes when the game came out. And we have a lot of bulk, right? So I've said this with other games too, you know, make some common and uncommon bulk starter decks for different leaders for people and hand them out, you know, uh, help people get into it. Uh, you know, those... Those cards are just sitting on your shelf right now in long boxes. Put them to use, you know? If you want more people in the game, that's a that's a great way to do it. So I, I'm not super concerned about it. I know there's a little bit of frustration out there, which, of course, why wouldn't there be? But I don't see these as, like, long-term problems for the health of the game. I agree. I think that there there's a plethora of cards that are, uh, I guess, out there. But like, like you said, Doa, they're just in long boxes. And I think that players trying to get into the game... Like, don't get me wrong, uh, I would love to sell them. I just don't, like Charmer has said many times, I don't want to have the chore of having to sell them or give them away or do the stuff. So they sit in a long box right behind me. Um, uh, but the, the one thing about the supply issue that I want to comment on, and I think I've said this before, is the fact that if they increased... Uh, increased production by like 50%, those cards would have been sold too. Like, that's the thing, because all of us who have everything would still go and draft and play and buy and do whatever. It's not mm. because we're in need, it's because we're in want, and that's the problem. So there's a lot of people out there who got what they wanted from pre-orders and whatnot. Keep in mind, that when, when this game was in pre-order mode, there wasn't the demand that you could pre-order it well into release. It's just the fact that there was so much skepticism around this games and I'm, I was surrounded by it too. Nobody wanted to support it. Uh, nobody wanted to, to carry it or whatever. So we, everybody who was on board with it and trusted it went out, got it. And now everybody else who's seeing everybody else enjoy it. Now I'm not saying that's everybody, but a lot of them are like, nah, you know what? Maybe I was wrong about this. Let's get into it. And they scooped up whatever was left, and whoever was still sort of still dragging their feet are now left out in the cold. There's going to be more cards. The challenge is going to be not so much getting those cards, uh, or is not so much the supply issue. It's getting those cards into the people who need them versus the people who want them. Because everybody is still itching to rip packs. Everybody is still saying, uh, in lieu of $20 of store credit, I want two packs of the two packs that you're offering me, you know, instead it, the value isn't there, but that's just kind of what it is. I, I went two and one at my locals this past weekend, uh, or two weeks ago, weekends ago, whenever this gets published, uh, they offered me like $20 of store credit or two packs. And I took the two packs cause I'm like, who knows when I'm going to get these again, or who knows when we have them. And I just, you know, you hang on to them and, and that's kind of where you're at. So uh, I think that the challenge is to find the players, talk to your local community, talk to your LGS, talk to the players who are playing. I guarantee you they've got hundreds of cards that are sitting in long boxes that are not doing anything. Maybe see if that there's a, a night that you can organize to bring people in and play a game of Popper or play a game of Commoner or however you want to say it and just say, hey, we're just playing Commons. Commons and mm -hmm. Uncommons are just Commons and, and we'll see how it goes. And maybe that's a good way to introduce players in rather than say... Sorry, your SOL, there's nothing left. Make some uh, Twin Suns decks. There yeah. you go. I was yeah. going to say there's Twin Suns. That's one of the things I was going to say, because then you only need one of each card. Um, but I was even going to go a step further and say, you could say you know, rares on down, because really right now, the big hurdle of accessibility is obviously a lot of the pricey legendaries. You know, if you're saying mm -hmm. to your friend who's just trying to get into the game, hey, you need three Darth Vaders, it's going to seem very daunting. But if you're like, hey, you know, here's a cheap deck that you can build and we're going to just do, you know, rares on down for a night or just commons or whatever. That's completely different. Uh, what I would say to anybody who is thinking about getting out of the game is that that seems like a, a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Like we're not going to be without product forever. We have had a, a smoother launch than what Lorcana did and they eventually hit their reprints or any and, Bandai release. Right. Yeah. Um, Seriously. Yeah. I, I was getting there, right? We're like having a, a smoother release than any One Piece release. 
Um, could it be better? Absolutely. But given the skepticism about the game when it came out and how it has caught fire, um, and, I, and I'm glad people are falling in love with it because we fell in love with it for a reason. Um, I, I just feel like it'll get there eventually. And I would also say this as well. Um, you know, outside of the occasional 5K here or there, um, there's only the one Galactic Championship this year. You're going to have time to catch up. You don't have to feel like you need to win your your big event every week or whatever. If somebody is interested in the game, they can still show up and play. The organized play mm. packs are supposed to go to anybody who shows up and participates. That was one of the key tenets of their three C's for the players, right? So if you just show up and you help new players learn, you show up and you, you trade cards, you show up and you just want to do like a learn to play thing, you're supposed to get one of those like organized play packs from the locals right we just want people participating so for me not d deciding to not play the game if you're truly interested and you're not just trying to be like a naysayer or whatever and you know i'm not uh saying that that's the case but there are bad faith people out there um if you're interested in the game there's no reason to to just be like no i'm, I'm not gonna play because it's expensive right now like that just seems really weird to me but cool. Yeah. Hey, play the game. Get out there. Help those that are uh, <laughs> around you. You've got bulk. Bring in some friends. Who knows how it goes? All right. Well, that is it. That's the mailbag this week. We're, we're closing it up. So thank you to everybody who submitted questions. You can do so by going to our Discord channel. We have our Bad Feeling channel in there. Uh, priority obviously goes to our Patreon supporters. You can go to patreon.com slash ice cave radio and support us there that's it that's all friends and uh doa a new line a new star wars line to close us out give us oh, i always forget oh well um, that's the um, beauty of this is that now it's right off the cuff no. that makes it pure i will just say i'm already on my way out everything's perfectly all right now we're fine we're all fine here now thank you how are you 